Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, it's time to get shady, and I'm gonna be talking about the products I don't like from brands that I love. Now, before you all come for me, I saw that Hiram did this video about a week ago, and I saw it and thought, oh my God, that is an amazing, amazing, amazing idea for a video. He's so original and his concepts are fantastic. So I thought, actually, whilst I don't like to, you know, rip or copy on other um, influencers here on YouTube, I thought this is just too much of a great opportunity to pass up. I've watched his video, loved it. And we're actually talking about totally different brands. So it's not a total copy, but I thought I wanted to jump on and actually share with you some of the products which I'm not a huge fan of, but from brands which I adore and adore and go on so much about on this channel. So I've got quite a lot to say. I want to be a little bit positive in this video. I don't want it to all just be a shade fest of ripping companies and products that I just don't like. So actually, I'm, I'm going to be alongside it recommending some of the amazing products from these brands alongside the ones that I just didn't work for me. Because after all, all these brands are my holy grail go-tos. I've featured them on the channel before and I've raved about them to you guys. So without further ado, let's get in. And let's be honest, we were always going to start with The Ordinary. This is like my favourite go-to holy grail skincare line. I fell in love with them about five years ago and I have never looked back. Affordable, cruelty-free, just amazing, amazing skincare. But with all the greats come some bads. And over the years, I've tried yeah, I've tried all of their products, I'd say. And most of them have been game-changing for my skin, with a few exceptions. The product which I hate, hate, hate the most from The Ordinary is the Hyaluronic Acid Plus B5 could not get on with this product at all. In fact, this is the reason that I only recently got into hyaluronic acid because I thought all of the, this was the first one I tried. I thought all hyaluronic acids are gonna be like this. You know, pill and peel if you try to put a product on top, sticky, tacky, doesn't really sink into the skin and just meh, does not work. It didn't work for me. And I know quite a few other people that said they had the same experience with it. So I thought, no, nope, writing off, this is me being a bit dramatic, writing off hyaluronic acid forever, never going near the ingredient again. I then tried some other hyaluronic acids and realized, do you know, this is just specific to this product. Um, most other hyaluronic acids sink in well, they layer well with other products, and you get that gorgeous boost of hydration without needing to, you know, think about how you're gonna put your next products on, which I had to when I was using The Ordinary. I didn't even make it through the first bottle. I disliked it that much. So, if you do want to shop with The Ordinary and want the hyaluronic acid, their um, marine hyaluronics is game-changing and lovely. It does everything you want and hope that the original hyaluronic acid would do. It hydrates and it also just sinks in like that. doesn't leave a trace and your skin feels oh, so nourished and hydrated after you use it. So definitely check out the marine hyaluronics, but wah, 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 firm pass to the hyaluronic acid. I also really don't like their retinols. Um, I mentioned this, I can't even remember which video it was, but I mentioned this in a video the other day about how I just you know, firm pass on the ordinary retinols. And quite a few people in the comments below were like, why? why? Why did you not like the retinols? Explain yourself. And I kind of forget that not everybody has been on this channel from the start. And I've talked about why I don't like them quite a lot. I don't find the texture sinks in. I don't really like um, how they layer under other products. They're quite greasy. I just, the strengths are bang on and I really wanted them to work. I tried so hard to get them to work and they just didn't work for me. I just didn't feel like I liked the texture or they applied well. If you want to know a little bit more about that, I did a whole review on each of the retinols by The Ordinary, which I'll link up there and below. So check that out if you do want to know a little bit more about my reasonings but the retinols mm, also a firm pass but, but definitely try the marine hyaluronics by the ordinary i love that product and i've left a link in the description box below i've actually left a link to all these products even the ones i hate you know in the interest of fairness treating everyone equal i've um, left all the links in the description box below if you want to check any of them out but yes to the marine hyaluronics no to the hyaluronic acid with B5. Now, if I had to choose like who's second place in my absolute favorite all time skincare brands, I'd probably, it'd be a toss up between Face Theory, Paula's Choice and The Inky List. So I'm just gonna go in a random order and go for, let's go for Face Theory first. Now I did a video on Face Theory talking about my favorite products from them, which I'll link above there um, and in the description box below. And you guys were like, wow, never heard of this brand, definitely want to try it. And it really started a great conversation about the amazing Amazing products that Face Theory have. And trust me, they have some holy grail, amazing, beautiful formulations. One of their holy grails for me was the Amil C Whipped Moisturizer. Beautiful, beautiful combination of vitamin C, a 5% niacinamide, which is the perfect strength niacinamide, um, and in a beautiful, lightweight, non-comedogenic moisturizer. 
Who doesn't want that in their life? Absolutely loved it. However, I first, when I first got my hands on this product, I bought the one with the SPF. This was like their new launch. They launched one with an SPF 20, and I used that. No, couple of reasons. First of all, SPF 20, come on. If you're gonna formulate a product, make it SPF 30. I don't know a study or a dermatologist out there that doesn't say SPF 30 is the minimum you should be wearing. So why are skincare companies coming up with things that like SPF 20? Not good face theory. Should be an SPF 30. But also the addition of the SPF just makes it a bit of an odd texture. It kind of, it goes from that whipped, light, water-based consistency to kind of just be a bit thicker and a bit heavier. And I just really didn't like it on my skin. So. It's a shame that I tried that first because I delayed trying the one without the SPF for quite a while and now it's in my skincare routine day in, day out and I absolutely love it. So a firm pass for me would be the Amil C by Face Theory um, with the SPF, but do not fear because I've left a link as well to the one without. So just check the one without because, and then add your favorite SPF on after it because you just do not need a low level SPF in your life. Now, let's tackle the Inky List. I had to think long and long and hard about a product from the Inky List which I don't enjoy. I love, love, love this brand. It is fast approaching my favorite skincare brand. It could overtake The Ordinary this year if they have a couple of new, really good launches. Their price point is to die for. Their formulations are fantastic. I love that their utilitarian plain packaging because it just looks really nice and all kind of mixes together really well on your vanity. Everything about them I love and they're British. So that's a huge tick in the box for me because I'm always biased towards British brands, but they do still have some fails and their standout fail was their oil and water double cleanse what this was all about. This is one of their original products as well, I think. So there's really no excuse. I just don't get what this was doing, why you'd launch with this product. It's designed to be a double cleanse in one product. Double cleanse is when you start with a balm cleanser, you finish with a gel cleanser, melts all the makeup, dirt, debris, SPF off your skin, and then you wash it away with a gel cleanser afterwards. I love, love, love a double cleanse. And so I reached for this and was like, oh my God, if it's a double cleanse in one product, who doesn't want that? Slathered it on. It doesn't cleanse. I mean, what is the point of a cleanser that doesn't cleanse? So it goes on the skin, doesn't really remove anything. It sits and it's greasy, it's difficult to wash off. When you do wash it off, you find out that actually everything, you know, and I'm not a heavy makeup wearer, but I put, you know, I had maybe like a little bit of concealer and it was still there after this. So uh, no, 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 this is a firm pass. And it pains me that this cleanser is so, so bad because this is a company that came up with the Oat Cleansing Balm, which is like my holy grail ad. I'm scared to mention it on this channel because I mentioned it way too often and you guys are always like, nah, here we go, the Oat Cleansing Balm again. So, you know, feel free to say in the comments, oh, the Oat Cleansing Balm again. But how can a company which comes up with such a groundbreakingly amazing, gorgeous cleanser come up with this just dud dirge of a product? And no. If you want to do a double cleanse, it only works if you do the two steps separately. I think we just kind of have to agree on that and move on because one melts and, you know, disintegrates all the SPF, the dirt, the debris, the makeup, the other washes it off. You can't get the two in combination. If you know a product that works, leave me a comment below, but I think double cleanse just has to be done two separate separate steps. So move on from the Inkylist oil and water double cleanse and say hello to the Inkylist oat cleansing balm, which is amazing. And then just pair that with your favorite like gel cleanser on the market. Do not need, do not need this double cleanse in your life. Now, let's go from the UK where we have our, you know, Holy Grail Inky List products through to Asia with Purito, which is a fantastic, fantastic South Korean skincare brand. I did a whole review on Purito, which I'll link up there because you have to, have to check this brand out. They are so good. They're so affordable. They're cruelty free. They just have some amazing, amazing products. Everyone fangirls, including myself over their um, SPFs, their, you know, sunblocks are fantastic. They do an unscented, and um, chemical sunscreen gorgeous they do a comfy water sunblock which is the mineral version game changing all of them lovely lightweight and beautifully formulated so i had to think long and hard about a product from purito which i don't like and i think there is only one and that is their from green cleansing oil now i i tried this and i i did the video from purito if you want to check that out i did that and i hadn't actually tried it at that point i talked about other people's experiences and the ingredients from the product and then i thought Do you know what in the name of completeness i need to purchase it and actually give it a go i did and oh it broke me out something chronic like honestly two uses in my skin was flaring up i had you know little white heads it was working towards a full breakout and i thought this shouldn't really happen because you're washing the product off so even though the oils in it are 
you know, a bit a bit comedogenic and they might be more suited to dry skin. Because you're washing it off, it shouldn't actually have that much of a difference. And then I realised it's because it doesn't wash off properly. It, you leave, it leaves a film on the skin, which I just think is a bit unpleasant in a cleanser anyway, but also can clog you and break you out. So this was like a firm, firm no for anyone with oily or acneic skin. I think if you have dry skin, you might actually really like this product. And leave me a comment below if you've tried it and you love it. Because I do think having a small moisturising film left on the skin isn't a bad thing to protect the skin and support the barrier function but for me as someone with oily breakout prone skin two uses in my acne was flaring up it was just a firm hard pass but don't despair because actually everything else from Purito was fantastic so check out that video and just you know get your credit card out and buy it all because I loved 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 so much of their products it's a shame that this oil just didn't work for me but I think maybe there is a place for it for people with dry skin so I'm not being totally shady you know there is a place for it in the world now a brand that I've been featuring quite a lot on the channel recently because I just I fell in love with it I didn't use them for ages and then all of a sudden I started trying their products and I thought wow they are a really really good brand and that is Paula's Choice now it's not hard to find a bad Paula's Choice product. That's not because they're a bad brand. It's just because they have literally like 200 products. So, you know, if you throw out that many products, you're bound to find a few duds in and amongst them. Most of their products are really good, but because they seem to have like tiny little nuance and changes between each product it can be really hard to work out which are the good products and which are the bad which you need and what the differences are between each and one of them i did a review on paula's choice which is a bit no holds barred kind of good and bad which i'll link up there so check that out if you want to explore the brand a little bit more and work out what's right for you and kind of just explain the differences between some of their baffling array of products but the one really terrible product which start for me and i mean really bad was their amiga plus complex moisturizer Everybody said this was amazing, and so I bought it, and then I realised I bought the wrong thing. They, everyone loves their Amiga Plus Complex Serum. This was the moisturiser. I bought the one, wrong one, but again, it's so baffling online, and there's so many different Amiga Plus Complex products from the line, it's actually quite hard to work out which one to buy. So I've left a link to the serum below, which is amazing. It repairs the barrier of the skin, it'll hydrate, it just really just fills the skin with beautiful levels of moisturisation. I love, love, love the serum. It's lightweight, it sinks in like that. Gorgeous product. This moisturiser, Ugh, it sits on the skin like a layer of like fat or lard. Nothing sinks in. It just is always there. As a really rich night cream, maybe you could get away with it, maybe. But I just don't know why you'd want to go to bed with something this occlusive on your face. It was really warm here in the UK when I tried this on and it just made my skin feel so warm and sweaty and grim and I wasn't glowing I was sweating and it's just not a nice product it doesn't let the skin breathe and I really don't understand what the point of it is now definitely the serum but the moisturizer can pulse try to get rid of it and then people won't be buying it by accident when they're browsing your um, website for the serum which is genuinely amazing so I'm glad that there's an alternative that I can re recommend because if you want a barrier repair serum that's packed full of mega fatty acids and is super hydrating the serum is amazing particularly as we're approaching winter here in the northern hemisphere Sphere, so our skin's drying and we want some extra hydration. The serum, amazing. This moisturiser, no. I didn't even finish the tub. I just like, you know, chucked it. And I didn't even give it to someone. Normally if something doesn't work for my skin, I'll gift it to someone because it might work for their skin. I didn't, I just don't see who this would work for. Who wants that thick a layer on their skin? So I tossed it out, never to be seen again. Finally, and I'm saving the one that is most difficult to last, and that is Neod. If you've watched this channel before, you know I am probably like the number one fangirl for Neod. I am... Literally, if I could afford to have my entire skincare routine by Neod, I would. They are a beautiful brand. A bit on the pricey side, but you get fantastic formulations from them. So I actually did like a bit of a, it's more like a piece of fan fiction, really, because I just loved it so, so much. Video on all the products from Neod, which I'll link up there to check that out. And there are so, so few that I would call fails. However, there are two which I think just just aren't worth the splurge, aren't worth spending the extra money, you know, that you have to spend to get a Neod product above what also is available on the market. The first one is the voicemail mask. Not sure on the name, not sure what it claims to do. This claims to be packed full of stem cells, plant stem cells, which are going to help your cells communicate better with each other, you know, repair the barrier and just give you an overall gorgeous level of hydration and, you know, better quality skin. I noticed zero difference from using this product. It's really, it's packed full of oil and water as well, which means it's kind of got an odd consistency. It's supposed to be a leave-on mask. So you put it on and sleep in it overnight and you wake up with gorgeous skin in the morning. I love a leave-on mask because I think you, it 
does kind of work. You get that intense recovery overnight. Love it. I noticed no difference in the morning and it's not hydrating enough that you can use it as a moisturizer. You have to put a moisturizer on top, which I think is kind of defeats the point of doing a leave on mask. I want that to be my moisturization. Forget the rest. Just didn't work for me. I didn't see the point of it. And it's no, no, I, I there's so many great leave on masks. I love like the summer Fridays jet lag mask. I'll leave a link to that below. That's a fantastic mask that when you finished using it, you wake up and you think, oh my God, I look gorgeous. My skin, I'm having a good skin day. This was not one of those products. And it pains me because with Neod, you think it'd be really good. They have some other great masks. The Flavano Mud Mask, beautiful. I'll leave a link to that. This, just, just not it. I didn't like it. Also, their survival with SPF. So I did a video on their survival range, which I'll link below. And I used the Survival 20, which is the one I could get my hands on at the time. That had an SPF 20 in it. And I said, actually, you really need to go for the SPF 30 because, you know, same thing as what we said with the face theory. You need an SPF 30 in your life. Forget the 20. So shame on you, Neil, for formulating with an SPF 20. They even do a 10, which is just even more pointless. I then reached for the Survival Zero, which is their antioxidant, no SPF, just their plain antioxidant. And it is amazing. I fell in love with it. Superb product. Love, love the texture was so much better without the um, SPF in there. And I realized actually the products with the SPF are just a bit of a dud because you better just adding, using the Survival Zero with the powerful antioxidant, game changing product and put your own favorite SPF over the top of it. That's where you get the benefit of a really good quality, high strength SPF and all the antioxidant protection that the Survival range gives you. I just don't think the ones with the SPF are actually adding that much. It's not my favourite SPF. I don't think it adds the protection that I need. And I just think, you know, get the plain antioxidant and then throw your own SPF on top. You're not, there's no point paying more for one with the SPF included when you don't like the SPF. That's just you know, my view. Let me know below if you, you know, differ and actually you love the ones with the SPF. So there you go, guys. I didn't want to be too shady because, you know, that's not the vibe I'm going on this channel. But I do think it's worth calling out that even and demonstrating, even those fangirl, hardcore, absolute favorite brands of anyone's do have some misses. And we shouldn't just be attached and dedicated to one single skincare line because amongst all the amazing products, there are always some duds lurking in the background and so just wanted to share a little bit of that, about that to help you to work out what's the best products from these brands and which ones you know you maybe just want to give a firm pass to let me know what your absolute favorite skincare brand of all time is leave me a comment below and if there's any products from within that line that you just don't like let's get the conversation going leave me your comments below wherever you are in the world guys stay safe stay well and i'll see you in the next video take care bye